This is Daniel Thristoff, a Bulgarian born calisthenics athlete who has achieved all these world titles within three to four years of doing street workout and calisthenics professionally. And as Daniel Fleffer would say, he's an absolute alien. So I want to know is it possible for a regular guy like me to become like the champion Daniel Thristoff by training? eating and recovering just like Daniel. So I want to see by the end of this week, will I become more like the cast and its world champion? Will my skills improve? Will my statics improve? Will I become more of a complete athlete? And most importantly, will this way of training like the champion, will that increase how fast I progress with the planche? So it's day one of training like Daniel and I'm in the gym getting ready and prepped for a two to four hour workout because from a recent interview with Daniel with Gore Nation, they found out that he trains for about two to four hours usually and about five times per week. I started training following how Daniel explained in his planche ebook. So this kind of gave me a look into his head on how he programs for his clients and how he programs and trains himself. Keep in mind the workouts you're going to see in this video are only a portion of the ebook because for this video I'm going to focus on my straddle planche. So that's only a section of the ebook that has other sections as well on how you can progress to the straddle planche and after the straddle planche. So check out the full ebook for more info on that. Okay, so the workout started off with two straddle planche holds max holds with a 15 kg resistance bands. This means I was holding up about 80% of my body weight with my own strength. And this is pretty similar to how I like to plan out my training. I don't like to train with maxes anymore. I like to do 80% of my body weight and then convert to my maxes and my actual 100% of my body weight from there. Okay, now guys, now the next move, the next skill, the next exercise, whatever you'll call it, was a bit of a weird one. This is one you wouldn't have seen before. And that was a one leg straddle planche and you alternate between the leg that's extended. And guys, let, let me, this was a weird one. I got really weird looks doing this one. It felt awkward, but maybe this is the secret because it didn't feel too bad, actually. I felt like I could hold it well, well protracted. You know, it was a bit awkward in the legs because I didn't know what my legs were doing, if they were in line or whatever, but it did feel all right. So is this one of the secrets to Haristov's training? Does he have more progressions that people aren't doing? Also, I had some mates training with me. They were looking at me doing this one leg straddle planche thinking, what the heck? And you know, I carried on. I said, don't worry, my guy, Haristov, He's got me and I'm gonna follow his program to the end of this week. So we'll carry on and see how I did. To finish up on day one was the usual stuff you would see in a straddle planche session. So it was stuff like frog planches, advanced tuck push-ups, assisted, advanced tuck max holds, uh, tuck planche push-ups. And to end, I, I don't know why, but Harista, he always likes to end off with a max straddle planche hold. I think sometimes with a band, sometimes without a band. And I don't know why, but that's the point where you're the most tired. I think he wants to do it so that he leaves all games on the table and leaves all his effort in the gym. So kind of like Valentin says, you know, do the maximum and shut up. So, you know, I did it. Um, I struggled a little bit, but it was okay. So that was the end of the day one training. So just like Daniel Christoph, we got to get a post-workout meal in to recover from that hard workout. It was about two hours, just over. So it was a long workout. So we've got to get that nutrients in and we're having sushi because that's Daniel's favorite meal to have. So we're having a bit of sushi. We've got the um, avocado sushi here, the maki and the nigiri. And then we have the yaki udon here. So some noodles with some tofu and then some gyoza as well so we're going to dive into this recover from the workout and then we're going to get on with the next few days of training so this is a good favorite food to have because as a calisthenics athlete or bodyweight athlete in general you want to stay lean and light so it doesn't affect your skills putting on body weight or our body weight that isn't functional so if you've watched my other video on how gymnasts learn the planche so fast you'll know that gymnasts stay lean all year round and most of that effort 80 percent of that effort is due to their diet and how they're eating and daniel christoph he's about 167 centimeters and about 60 to 66 kg i think 65 kg is like his competition weight so he's extremely extremely light and I'm cutting at the moment trying to get lighter and lighter while keeping my muscle mass and it's working for me so far so this was a great meal to have. So on day two, we decided to train more like Daniel when he's training for a competition, which is slightly different to his regular training. So then in a Gore Nation interview again, he said that he goes from light stretching to training on P-bars for combination sets, you know, stuff like that, then to the high bar, then back to P-bar combinations, and then he stretches again for about 20 to 30 minutes. So that's how he likes to structure his workouts. Of course, these sets are, they have very low rest times in between the sets because he's training for long combinations and low rest times so his endurance has increased for these combinations so training just like Daniel I started off on the high bar I started off with some combinations going from some wide straddles to you know touch front levers
Ubers, to straight bar Victorians, to Maltese, just working on some high bar combinations because I haven't done high bar in a while and it's not usually what I train on. I also tried to do some dynamics, but guys, man, this was embarrassing, man. I didn't know what was going on with dynamics, you know, trying to swing on the bar and stuff like that. It's, it's not my thing, so um, not much happened there. Just imagine me hanging from the bar, swinging, trying to do a 180, um, messing around with some 360 muscle ups. Um, yeah, I need someone to teach me some 360 muscle ups and, and stuff like that. But anyway, we carried on with the rest of the workout as well. So on day two was working on new skills. So Daniel Christoph, he always likes to introduce new elements into calisthenics, new things people haven't seen before, things that make you go, wow. Um, because part of calisthenics competitions is creativity. So I started working on one of his favorite skills that he always does in competitions, and that's the dragon planche. He has this so consistent. So I've done a few dragon planches before that you can see on my Instagram, but it's been a while since I've done them. And once you have the dragon planche, it's not actually a strength skill. Once you have the planche, it becomes more of a balance skill. And with balance skills like the handstand, doing them frequently is kind of how you learn them. And since I haven't been training it so frequently, doing this dragon planche was hard, but we got a few good ones that you can see on screen. And this was another lesson learned from training like Daniel. I remembered how good it feels to start learning a new skill and sort of perfecting one, like the planche over and over, trying to learn new skills and bring different elements of calisthenics. That's what it's about. So I really like this aspect of training and I've continued learning the dragon planche even now. So for day two recovery, we had some supplements we could work with because again, from that same interview with Daniel on Gone Nation's page, we found out that one of the supplements that Daniel really likes is, you know, whey protein a bit sometimes, but more importantly, collagen. This is a big one that I've mentioned in my video on the supplements that gymnasts take that it helps improve their planche performance. And one of them was collagen supplements. This is a big deal because as bodyweight athletes and more calisthenics athletes in general, like gymnasts, we put a lot of strain on the joints when we're doing all these skills and combinations. So it's important that we recover using the right supplements that will help us actually build up our joints and their integrity. So you know we got in a big healthy scoop of the Collagen Builder from Viva Life, one of their new products. And the reason why I like the Viva Life collagen supplement so much is compared to some of the animal collagen, the bovine collagen. This has high levels of the amino acids that build up the tendons and make that collagen. It has higher profiles of that, so you're getting more for your money. You're getting more of that supplement and those amino acids that you want. So if you want to try out the supplement that even Daniel Christoph takes, then check the link down below to the Collagen Builder on Viva Life's website and use the code JACK10 for my 10% off. Day three, okay, so day three was a pretty much a regular workout. Kind of like day one, I was just trading like how he did in his ebook. So this was, again, the single leg shadow planche. Again, I got some weird looks, a bit of like, got a bit of that. So don't worry, I carried on with the workout and it felt pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. I did feel a bit weird because I didn't know whether my legs were too high, how I was bending them, you know, it looks a bit awkward again, but you know, we carried on and that still helped with my planche in general in terms of the intensity and the muscle activation. But considering this is a five day a week program, by day three I expected to feel a lot more sore than I did. I didn't really feel sore at all. So it seemed that in Daniel Christoph's workouts, he doesn't do three to four sets like most people do. He does more like one to two sets and then switches to the next exercise. This means he gets a lot of different exercises in for the same volume in one workout. So this got me thinking, is this the reason why he's so complete? Because instead of doing three to four sets like most people, he does one to two and then switches the exercise. That could be one of the reasons. I don't know guys, you let me know. Why is Daniel Fristoff such a complete athlete? And what is the secret to becoming such a good complete athlete? Okay, so day five, back to training. So day four, I took off but I didn't really take it off as a rest day. I actually had to move house, so I was moving boxes all day. So instead of resting, I was actually training harder than I would. I was doing hours of moving things back and forth. So when it came to day five in the gym, you know, this wasn't a great day for me. I wasn't hitting the sets, I wasn't hitting the reps, I wasn't getting a good enough muscle activation. You know, it was one of those workouts where it was just a full struggle. But I started thinking to myself, would Daniel Christoph, would he use moving house as an excuse to not train and not become the world champion? Would he use, oh, I had a long day at work as a reason not to train? Would he use, oh, my back feels stiff, so I probably shouldn't train today. I don't wanna risk anything. No, probably not. All these things, they can be worked around. You can push through some of them and some of them is just not being motivated. So thinking that I carried on with the workout and it actually wasn't too bad, you know, it was still 
not as good as it could have been but I'm proud of myself for carrying on and finishing that workout especially this one it was a midweek one and he didn't make this one easy either and so with this newfound passion I was ready to carry on training and finish this week I wasn't done yet I was gonna finish training like Daniel Fristoff as hard as it would be so on day seven one of the last days of training you know it wasn't too different to some of the other days like day one still a lot of one to two sets a lot of push-ups and holds with a light band and a lot of max holds that kind of thing so it wasn't too different but something I did do different was use a weight vest a weight vest is something that Daniel Fristoff really utilizes a lot, especially for his push-ups. It seems that Daniel Fristoff really likes planche push-ups for helping with his regular static planche. In a recent tutorial on Daniel Fleffield's channel, a link in the description, he did a planche tutorial and in it was the planche push-up and how he trains for it. Because some people were asking, how do you get your planche push-up so explosive? And one of the secrets he kind of released to everyone was that he uses a weight vest. Uh, planche lean push-ups with weight. He does pseudo planche push-ups explosive with a weight vest, tuck planche push-ups with a weight vest explosively. All of that when he takes off the weight vest, you know, Rock Lee taking off his weight feels light. So at the end of my workout, I decided to do some pseudo planche push-ups, as many as I could, just like Daniel Ristoff, to get that explosive power for my planche push-ups. And if you want to learn the explosive planche push-up just like Daniel Ristoff, then check out the link down below to take a look at the Gore Nation weight vest. 10 kg, it's a really good weight vest and use the code JACK10 for money off this weight vest as well. At the end of my workout, I trained with a weight vest just like Daniel Christoph. I left no games on the table, left it all in the jib. I did the maximum and shut up and that was it. That was the end of the full week of training like Daniel Christoph. I learned a lot over this week of training, even if it's the little things just with mindset and just learning different skills. Now to conclude, should you train like Daniel Christoph? Should you do only one to two sets of things, doing 80% with the light band, you know, a lot of planche push-ups, a lot of weighted planche push-ups? And what I'd say, it depends on where you are in your planche journey. If you feel like you can withstand the high frequency, the five day a week training and manage the volume correctly, then I think training like Daniel Fristoff might be really good for your progression. However, for your really early days, keep it simple. There's no need to be mixing up with loads of different variations. Learn the basics. However, I think there is a bit of method to this madness. The single leg straddle planches, you know, the only one to two sets and sometimes only one set of things. I think there is a little bit of method to that madness. So I guess only time will tell. If any of you have got his ebook, does it work for you? Have you seen incredible progress using it? Let me know down in the comments. But if you haven't already, check out this video because I'm gonna break down how Valentin Blanc trains. It's very different to Daniel Christoph and you're gonna gain some tips on how to program your planche progression.